Good morning, YouTubers. And yes, technically it's morning. 12.05 a.m. On the 27th of February. Wednesday, the 27th of February. There is only one more day of this month left. All right. <coughs> we are going back to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Chapter 4, how Christ is made use of for justification as a way. When Christ hath done to purchase, proceed, procure, and bring about our justification before God, is mentioned already, that he stood in the room of sinners, engaging for them as their cautioner, undertaking, and at length, paying down the ransoms, becoming sin, or a sacrifice for sin, and a curse for them, and so laying down his life, a, and so laying down his life, a ransom to satisfy divine justice, and this he hath made known in the gospel, calling sinners to accept to accepting of him as their only mediator. and to arresting upon him for life and salvation, and with all, working up such as belong to the election of grace, to an actual closing with him upon the conditions of the covenant, and to an accepting of him, believing in him, and resting upon him, as satisfied with and acquiescing in that souvenir way of salvation and justification through a crucified mediator. Now, for such as would make use of Christ as the way to the Father and the point of justification, those things are re requested, requested to which we shall only premise this word of caution, that we judge not the want of these requests to ground to exempt any the heareth the God, that heareth the gospel from the obligation to believe and rest upon Christ as he is offered in the gospel. One, there must be a conviction of sin and misery a conviction of original guilt, whereby we are banished out of God's presence and favor, and are in a state of enmity and death, are come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 states, and these more or less will all be from the New International Version, Copyright 1984, all rights reserved, unless I state otherwise. That's what version they will be from. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, becoming dead or under the sentence of death through the offense of one. Romans 5.15 says, but the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Being made sinners by one man's disobedience, verse 19, I'm not sure what that's coming from, unless it's still referring to Romans. And therefore, under the reigning power of death, verse 17, and under that judgment that came upon all men 
to condemnation, verse 18, and of original innate wickedness, whereby the heart is filled with enmity against God, and is a hater of him, and all his ways, standing in full opposition to him, and to his holy laws, loving to contradict and resist him in all his acting, despising and undervaluing all his condensation of love, obstinately, obstinately refusing his goodness and offers of mercy, and per, peremptorily persist, persisting in rebellion and heart opposition, not only not accepting his kindness and offers of mercy, but con contem contemning them, trampling them underfoot as embittered against him. As also, there must be a conviction of our actual transgression, whereby we have corrupted our ways yet more, run further away from God, brought on more wrath upon our souls. According to that sentence of the law, cursed is everyone that abideth not in all things that are written in the law to do them. Deuteronomy 27:26 states, Cursed is the man who does not uphold the words of this law by carrying them out. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Galatians 3.10 states, All, all who re rely on observing the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of law. What way this conviction is begun and carried on in the soul, and to what measure it must come, I cannot now stand to explain, only, in short, now, that upon whatever occasion it be begun, whether not a word carried home to the heart by the finger of God, or by some sharp and crossing dispensation, fear of approaching death, some tenuous outbreaking, or the like, it is a real thing, a heart-wrenching conviction, not general and notional, notional, but particular, plan and pinching, affecting the heart with fear and tear, making the soul seriously and really to mind this matter, to be taken up with the thoughts of it, and anxiously and earnestly to cry out, what shall I do to be saved? And finally, will make the soul willing to be hearkened and hear what hopes of mercy there is in the gospel, and to embrace the way of salvation which is their way down. And the reason of this is because Christ and himself tells us the whole needeth not the physician but the sick. Matthew 9.12 states On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. He is not come to call the righteous, that is, such as are righteous in their own eyes, but sinners, that is, excuse me, such as are now no more whole at the heart, as seeing no evil, no hazard or danger, but pricked and pierced with the sense of their lost condition being under the heavy wrath and vengeance of the great God because of sin, and seeing their own vileness, cursedness, wickedness, and desperate madness, because naturally we hated God and Christ. John, verse 15, 
or chapter 15, verse 23 through 25, and this one is from the English Standard Version. Whoever, 23, verse 23, whoever hates me hates my father also. 24, if I had not done among them the works that no man, that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. 25. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. And have a strong and natural antipathy at the way of salvation through Jesus. Therefore, nothing but strong and inevitable necessity will drive us to a compliance with this gospel device of love. And that concludes part one of How Christ is Made Use of for Justification as a Way. And I shall be back. All right, my brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. I love you guys. Shalom.